In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Good morning, church. So Bartimaeus was a blind man, but he wasn't always blind. He said to Jesus, let me see again. I wonder how he lost his sight. Was it a work accident or a strange illness or a childhood trauma? Who knows? Bartimaeus was a beggar. He was begging for his life, food and shelter, because he was blind and he had no way to make a living. So he sat at the Jericho Gate, only 15 miles from Jerusalem, which is a pretty good sight. So he knew what to do, but he was forced to beg. There's a lot of pain and brokenness in the world. Last spring, I went to downtown DC for a faith event. And as I was walking up 14th Street, I saw a woman sitting on the sidewalk, off to my left, with her back up against a building. And in front of her was um, a small blanket with some some booklets and other things arranged on it, and a, and a cup for donations. As I got closer, I, I realized that I remember her. I remember her. She, she has sort of a blank face. She suffers from chronic homelessness and from mental health issues. I couldn't remember her name, but, but I remembered her from my time in serving a parish in downtown DC. As I got right to where she was, she was seated, um, she said, Randolph, I know what you did. <laughs> that got my attention. <laughs> and, I, and first of all, I was surprised that she remembered my name. I mean, it's five years ago. But then, what did I do? So I said, um, what did I do? And she said, you know what you did. <laughs> You forged my signature on the adoption papers. I said, no, I didn't do that. But I knew that it meant that she yearned for family and home and some sort of stability in her life. I said, no, I didn't do that. But this is what I want you to do. Tomorrow, I, want, I know that you know where the services and people are that can help you find shelter and food and safety. And tomorrow morning, I want you to go and talk with them and ask for their help. Will you do that? And I said, I'm going to pray for you. She said, okay, Randolph. I don't know what happened. But I know this. There's a lot of pain and brokenness in the world. Amen. Bartimaeus was a blind beggar sitting by the road to Jerusalem. But he was, probably, he was probably also a practicing Jew. I mean, he knew the faith. He could speak in that language. He could speak in those, using that terminology. He, he probably had some skills, or, or he probably would have died. But he was sitting there. And when he heard the crowd talking about Jesus, he had an idea of who Jesus was. And he yelled out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, um, what do you want? What do you want me to do? And Bartimaeus did not say, choose me as the greatest. He did not say, let me have great power. He did not say, let me sit at your left or your right. He didn't do any of those things that we've been talking about for the past four weeks. He said, I want to see again. I want to be healed. That's what he was asking for. And Jesus said, 
He, Jesus didn't touch him. He didn't put spittle on his eyes. He didn't do anything. He said, go. That's right. Your faith has made you whole. That's right. Your faith has given you your sight. And he did. He followed Jesus on that road to Jerusalem. He probably was not at the cross when Jesus was crucified, but he was with Jesus in Jerusalem. The good message, the good gospel message of this passage is this. Yes, there's a lot of pain and suffering and brokenness in the world, but what Bartimaeus tells us, the story tells us, is for us to deal with it, we first of all have to say, this is my brokenness. For him, it was pretty clear, he was blind. But let's say we have a spiritual or an emotional or a psychological uh, uh, illness. For us to be healed, it's important for us to say, this is my brokenness, and to say it to somebody whom we trust, to say it to somebody who's a professional, to say it to some sort of support group, to put it on the table and claim, this is my brokenness, this is my pain. And Bartimaeus also said, Jesus, I need help. Heal me. God, I need help. Heal me. And we need to do that too. Because right. there are some things in life that we just can't solve on our own. That's right. And it seems like in this day and age, there are a lot of things in our lives that we can't solve on our own. We need help, maybe from each other, but also, in this case, the message is, we need help from God. Yeah. You know what? It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter what our demographics are. It doesn't matter what our age is. This is a part of humanity. And the crazy thing about this whole story, you've got to remember that Jesus is headed to Jerusalem. He knew he was being crucified. And what that crucifixion crucifixion represents for us is God's choice to embrace all of the pain and suffering and brokenness of the world. Hanging up there. Embracing it all, yours and mine and everybody else's. Amen. And if God can choose to accept all of that pain of the world, we're supposed to do something sort of like that like maybe accept our own pain, or to honor and respect somebody else's brokenness. Again, there's a lot of pain and brokenness in this world. We need to be healed. In 12-step groups, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, Workaholics Anonymous, all that stuff, it's built on some, some good principles. It's be, actually built on Christian principles. And actually, two of the most important points are exactly what Bartimaeus did. That is, in those groups, people come and say, this is, what I'm do this is what I've done. I confess my brokenness. I am a mm, whatever. And then they also say, I choose to turn my life over to God for healing. You see, it's the same thing that Bartimaeus did. That theme of healing by being honest and by moving to God is a part of our culture, just as the presence of systemic, personal, relational pain and brokenness. There was a lot of pain and brokenness in our nation last week. Because here it was again. Here it was again. The 14 Americans that were pipe bomb targets are broken, if you don't stay in for days to come, probably, with fear. They could have died. And the accused is broken with anger. What's going on with him? The families and friends of the 11 worshipers in Pittsburgh the synagogue, their hearts are broken with grief. And the shooter, his brokenness is hatred. For us in our nation, we need to say, as people of faith, as people of faith, 
we have the opportunity to apply what Bartimaeus did, what has been, what has been proven works in groups of addiction, what makes sense when we talk about Jesus' role in our lives. We need to apply the principles of our faith to the pain and brokenness of our nation. And in some way, reach across barriers so that if there's someone that you disagree with, someone that we disagree with, people on this side and that side, people who are, are different or whatever, everybody goes through painful times. We need to be able to honor that pain and say, I'm sorry you're going through it. To just be human with each other rather than fighting and hurting each other. For people of faith, we need to say, when will this killing end? When will the anger and hatred end in our nation? We know that we can't solve it on ourselves, on our own, but we do believe that God is there to help, to guide, and to make it happen. For people of faith, one answer to the question of when will this pain end in our nation, one answer to the question is that we will be healed when we can share our corporate pain and, and brokenness. And we've got, to find out, we've, we've got to find ways to do that throughout this nation. We've got to find out ways that no matter who our God is, but we're Christians, is that we turn to God for help. Because I don't think it's going to happen unless we do make it a part of our spiritual journeys, whoever we might be. Because what happens then is that our hearts are softened, you know? When we share our pain and our forgiveness with God and with others, our hearts are softened so that we can receive God's love more easily and spontaneously and let God's love flow through us to others who are broken and in pain. I don't see any other way. But that is a way. And people are changed. In a little while, the choir is going to sing Amazing Grace. And you, you know the story of that hymn. John Newton participated in, in slave trade. And finally, his hard heart was softened. He was converted. He realized the pain that he had caused, the deep pain and sin that he had participated in. And as an Anglican priest, he wrote that hymn. And the last line, of course, is about, I once was blind, but now I see. It's the same thing. We're not going to sing it, but I want us to say it. Will you say that la the first verse with me? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found was blind, but now I see. The choir is going to sing a wonderful rendition of it. Let that be our message for today. Our nation needs it, our world needs it, and you know what? We need it to be healed through our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen.